Good evening. <clears throat> Anyone and everyone. It's got the new goblins, these things. Just figured I'd let you all watch me just chill out and paint for a bit. Have a chat if anyone wants to chat. So yours. There you go. If anyone's got any questions, hit me up with some questions. Yo. Do a bit of green stuff here. <clears throat> What's everyone been up to today? Anything? Anything nice? Diana Armies on Parade. Um, no, I didn't. I was judging Armies on Parade for my local games workshop. I say judging. I helped decide. Uh, and it was a fun day. It was good fun. It was, I liked it. The one that won was awesome. He had made them, got like a printed backdrop of some space station thing. Like a dusky background, it was all right, it was very nice. Yeah, these new goblins are awesome as well, like genuinely awesome. <clears throat> Just gonna do a little bit of gap filling on them. Then we'll go from there. <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Yeah, it was a Gene Steelers one. It was good. It was top. It was a good board. about green stuff like no matter how little you do you always end up with too much Good evening everyone. How are you doing? Are you all alright? You're all having a good night, I hope. night I've had a uh, had Lord of the Rings on the two towers the extended version and I was just I don't know just inspired just to jump up and do a bit of this and invite you guys along I've had a pretty chilled day a bit of sleep for most of it which was uh, which was nice I must admit Anyone else done anything awesome? Tell me about you. Right, why don't I attend Golden Demons? Um, it's not something that drives me. Can't say I'm a competitive sort of person. 
I'm part of me thinks I ain't good enough, you know. Um, but <clears throat> I suppose that's what drives me on, eh? But yeah, it's I'm not. Oh yeah, I'm just not driven in that way. Um, regardless of how practical a uh, business decision it might be, I'm uh, made of different stuff. I think. So, uh, although at the same time, going by me philosophies from some other videos. I uh, I think everybody should enter painting competitions, weirdly, because um, it can only support and grow what we do, and that's got to be better for everybody, you know, simple as that really. So yeah, there you have that. Hey, Mr. Um, Mr. Thomas, you all right? Oh, it's been a while since I've used green stuff. The models lately have been so good, they just, most models don't need it, do they? Finally got a weekend off. What what is it you do by the way? Coming to Games Day in November. Which Games Day is it? And what's what's the date? Yeah, Golden Demon. That's I meant the same thing. <clears throat> oh, Mr. Rich, you all right? How's it doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Just chilling out and doing some green stuffing, these new goblin things. Which are really cool squigs. <clears throat> and for a change, I've got coffee, not tea. Mm -mm.
Evening, guys. Are you, uh... Does anyone fancy a, a chat? Let's see if we can do the one-to-one -one chat thing. Put your hands up if you do. What about you, Mr. Rich? You up for it? If you're still there. All them hands up for a chat. All those hands just waving. Give me a thumbs up for chatting. <laughs> You'll have a quick chat. It might be a mess. What might be a mess? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to. Uh, Push the button. Let's hope the internet. Hey. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> man. Uh, not too bad. Can you hear me? Yeah. Let me. Let me put me in some kind of appropriate illumination. Hey, brilliant. Um, for everyone that doesn't know, that guy there is uh, Richard Gray. <laughs> He's, dead good. He's dead good at what he does. What are you doing, by the way? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just cleaning up one of the new Warhounds. The, uh, the oh, little epic guys. Nice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're really cool, them, aren't they? Yeah, I've I've taken this one actually, and I've scraped all the details off it because I'm going to paint it up like the big one that I did. <laughs> all right, oh, nice one, nice one, nice one. See, uh, Siege Studios have joined us. That's nice as well. So, what, which details are you scraping off? It just all the the borders around the... everything. Uh, um... Uh, so the standard models, um, I don't know, if I've got the pieces anywhere. They uh, they have like all um, like uh, symbols and things on the carapace and yeah. Uh, yeah, all that kind of crap. So I've just cut it all off. It's all smooth now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's how I like all my bits of bobs if I can get them that way. Good old plain. Yeah, canvas. I, I'm always complaining. Yeah. It, it's a problem actually I find with a lot of Games Workshop models is that um, they put so much detail on and uh, I don't always want a lot of detail because I want to be able to paint you know whatever I want on it. Yeah exactly I, I absolutely agree with you like when you get designs etched into cloaks Oh I, I mean, hate that Yeah, I, It yeah. makes it harder to paint the design I think Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, and something I, I've seen as well I was gonna say, like things like uh, on even on non games workshop things, like on busts and things, where they put like uh, textures in into the cloak. I'm like, well, you can paint the textures on. You don't need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it takes some of the. Uh, it takes. Well, it commits you, doesn't it? It commits yeah, exactly. you to what you wanted, and you don't always yeah. want that at all. You know. And what was the? There was a model recently that I was having that kind of grumble with. I was just wishing there was a... I can't really remember what it was. But you, you you go through that process, don't you? You look at a model and you think, right, where do I need to shave this? And how practical is it going to be to, say, take a, an Imperial Eagle off a Space Marine's shin, for example, just yeah. so you can have the appropriate space? You know? Yeah. And I suppose then you add into that... And I think I, I'll go with Space Wolves in this instance... Sometimes the, the the molding, you know, the shape of the mold, um, the undercut, should we say, 
it means any some kind of freehand or some kinds of um, some different types of say like filigree bordering they're not quite as clean they've had to be softened you know so yeah yeah I, I know i know exactly what you mean yeah and you're just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i know it's crazy because you're like well if i'd freehanded it it would look much cleaner so <laughs> yeah yeah well that's that's one of the good tips out there actually for for some people you know when in doubt you know, when in doubt, if, if an object's meant to be sharp or smooth, well, just choose, don't you? Paint it as if it's sharp, and it'll look sharp, and no one will mm. ever see it. You know, yeah. It's, uh... But the the new night, because, you know, I painted the night Valiant recently. It's got yeah. a crotch panel, and that crotch panel yeah. has got a, a, a Mechanicus symbol committed onto it. And I just right, don't yeah. think it looks quite right being there, because it's got one there and one there. <laughs> on the actual model yeah. it, it splits the way your eye wants to look at it so I wish I could just yeah. remove that one from down below you know but you can't or, or the only way the way you could is if uh, you've got the there's a blank one on the castle and kit all right yeah yeah the what the, the one with the gun uh, is that got a blank is it got a line down the middle yeah yeah hmm. so yeah that's 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 that. In fact, the uh, shoulders as well on the night suffer suffer from that. Is it where does where's the border end and where does the armor begin? Sort of question. Yeah. So you have to paint them in. It, it tapers off. You know. Mm. Having said that, though, because um, that's obviously a problem with plastic, but you get uh, resin models, and um, sometimes I find the details are too sharp on them, and I wish they were. Mm -hmm softened down just a little bit because like yeah. just if it's a little bit softer i can paint a sharp yeah. edge <laughs> yeah. it'll be like in some like maybe hair or something like that sometimes i suppose like yeah if you like with this four-jeweled space wolf heads you know there'll be some details too sharp and th this bit here in faces yeah you know and it, it sometimes goes does it goes too thin even to to sculpt safely doesn't it you know yeah but inter interestingly, I uh, I don't do that many resin or forge wheel kits. I, I tend to uh, try and stay away from them, unless they're plastic. No. plastic yeah, i have gone a bit into plastic at the moment. Um, I did do quite a few forge wheel kits, uh, but it was mainly the bigger things, and they take so long to do that, uh, you yeah. know, just the cleaning up process is a pain in the backside. Yeah. I remember the first the first Reva Titan I did. That took me almost um working on and off, but it was mainly on and off. It took me almost a month to clean properly and um to wash, clean and assemble properly. It just almost a month just to, just for that one Reva. Um I was being a little bit fussy with it, but I, I couldn't help myself. That was just like my default running on it. And I just yeah yeah. I don't understand these people that can do it in a couple of days. I mean, oh, I it drives me nuts. The, the, the I, I see people. people I, I I see people like uh, knock together a model and they're like, oh, it, it only took me an hour or whatever to put it together. I'm like, how have you put it together in an hour? <laughs> it's taken me all day just to clean up an arm. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this the the goblin box all day, all day to get nine models um, assembled. Barely mold lined because the coloured plastic mold lines really weird. And just four of them under coated, yeah. you know, all day. Um, so yeah, here I am now shoving green stuff onto a, which will probably be dry by the end of this. Or at least too, too firm to work with, you know. Yeah, that, but to be honest though, I mean, I don't know if you paint gaming standard armies or anything like that, but what I found is. I have different mindsets that I'll choose, like you choose tools for a job. I go, right, I need my smash it out mindset. I need my yeah. army painting mindset. I need me um, fun painting my, you know, just I choose mm. different mindsets like like tools. And yeah. it, I was thinking about doing a video for this. And it's nice that you're, you're here. So, you know, run this idea behind you and see if other painters have that as well, you know. Do you 
because mo most people or most people think, oh, I am this kind of painter and I can't be another kind of painter. Whereas yeah. if you look at your thoughts as tools, then you can start to develop your toolbox upstairs. Yeah. You know. Well, I, it's not, so for me, I paint, if I'm going to paint something, this is something that I've moved towards because I mean, I used to do loads of armies and all sorts of things, but um, I've moved towards just painting things that I enjoy. Uh, so it's just, it's always just about, am I having, am I enjoying myself painting it? Yeah, yeah, um, um, because you, as you say, you have to change your mindset when you're like painting an army and things. And um, I just don't enjoy it as much. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's about finding that spark, isn't it? Like somebody asked me earlier yeah. on in the comments if I, if, uh, why I don't go to, painting competitions and again it's not putting myself under that pressure to paint for those things it, it yeah that spark out of it no no that's that's very true actually because uh, I, I think we had a chat with david soper didn't we about that sort of thing uh, i mean we did. I, i've talked to him a, a few times about it and um it's like always like pressuring yourself to finish a model for a competition um you for, you don't have that time then to keep looking back and you're know, just reassessing what you you're doing and and all that kind of thing and it's um it takes away from the creative process because you're just like oh I, I don't have time to do that so I'm just like charging through the whole process and yeah, it's yeah. uh yeah so uh, and uh, to uh, to go along with that actually um I've heard that Games Workshop are now cutting out all the mini demons. So, really? yeah, uh, one year. Yeah, one, really? one. Well, it'll be two a year because they're keeping the European one as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So one a year in this um, country. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Which I'm actually quite happy about. I know uh, a few yeah, people have yeah. told me that uh, that they're a bit concerned about it because it's going to be harder for people to get trophies and things. But you know, I kind of. Like it that it's game, gonna be it? hard, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, it it means that because, so the problem is that I like to you know I just like to go to the competitions anyway and just see people and just you know get involved and see all the models and everything. It's, yeah, um, yeah. But I'm always like, oh, if I'm going, I'll I'll enter something. And what always happens was I'm constantly um, reducing the quality of my work because I'm forcing myself to finish a model for a competition. Then, Oh, there's another competition in a few months. So that's the next one. Of it. And then the next one. And I'm like, I could be doing so much better work if I wasn't just pushing myself to finish for a competition all the while. I mean, some, some ways it's good because it does give you a deadline and you're like, well, you know, I'm going to get it done. But yeah. if, <laughs> if you've got like half the model and finished and you've got a week to go and you're like, I'm going to have to keep completely sacrifice the the quality that i want then it's not yeah, good yeah. well I, t I tell you some of the things i've experienced as as years go by because i've been around some golden demon winners in the past you know when, when we've been painting together and things like that and there's there's definitely painters out there that will paint something in a night just for pleasure and then enter it just because and win a golden demon yeah and then well, that, that's kind of a different thing, though. That's like the challenge of do it, like, like, can I do it in a night or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, which actually, yeah, that is that's a different thing. That's kind of like that's exciting almost. It's like you know, it comes but, from there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it comes from the heart. Yeah, but I think it's a bit different when it's like if you've got a week or two weeks and you've you've spent like a couple of months up to that point working on it, and then you've like now I've got to rush it, so I'm compromising what I've already yeah, done. Yeah. Then, yeah. You know, yeah, you, you compromise it with it because the different mindsets show through, don't they? You, yeah, when, exactly. When you from, from slow, patient, precise, deliberate to it, it just it's like handwriting, it tells in handwriting. Yeah. You know, when someone's rushing, it doesn't matter yeah. how, how good they are at calligraphy, rushing is rushing, you know. Mm. And uh, another thing, like, so I use Instagram as a tool for me because so I take the photos and then I put them on Instagram and then every day I'll look at what I've posted and then I can do the pinch and zoom and just look at it. And I'm, so I don't have to have the model with me wherever I am, even from walking the dog sometimes. I just have a quick look at the model I've posted. See, That's really nice to hear because I do the same. I sit there, 
like if, if there's nothing to do in work one time i'll i'll literally bring instagram up on, on my pc oh because then the image is like this big in front yeah of me. yeah and i'm just like yeah i'm going through my own work i'm i'm picking it apart constantly do you think that's insecurity partly um because there's times I, I feel think... like it's for me, and there's times where I'm appreciating your work going, yeah, it's cool. But then other times are going, yeah. oh, I hope I, no I think, that bit. I think it's a combination of things. So there's like ego and snobbery and uh, just like kind of see faults and things and for improvements. It's, you know, it's all these things. So Yeah, man. I know because when, when I do some of what I've worked, well, when I've done some of what I think is my best work, the reason I've done it is because I've painted something I want to look at, you know, because not, not, not mm. every painter out there, regardless of how, how good they are, how much of a fan they are, they've not always painted something that I want to look at. And I, I go back to, um, for example, White Dwarf when I was a kid. My favourite bit about White Dwarf, and it still is, is just looking at the pictures. Yeah. You know, so oh, I this... look at all my old favourites and I go back to all my old favourites. So when I paint a model yeah. like Ragnar, I literally painted Ragnar so I can look at modern Ragnar. Yeah. That's why I did that guy's like it. Oh, I love it. So yeah, that's I am not I'm not sure if that is ego or just me satisfying my own yeah. child. Well, your own creativity. Like, yeah, you just wanna like you wanna create we could, so part of why I got into like painting um games workshop models and things when i was a kid i used to draw battle scenes <laughs> and really? it's like, it was just like <laughs> yeah yeah it's just an extension of that it's like <laughs> yeah well i used so, to try uh, and copy uh, john blanche's pencil drawings of yeah Epic. yeah you know when you get the like the, the real forced perspective off into the background you have yeah. like a, a bane blade they're the ones i remember bane blade and terminators versus i think it was a chaos chaos titan Oh, just yeah. Oh, I loved I, anything with those the Titans, those old black and white drawings with the yeah. Titans in. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the there's something so organic in there about the old artwork. It it, it absolutely yeah. mystifies me. Oh, I've I managed to finally score a rat spike on eBay today as well. So that was only thirty <laughs> quid. Oh my, yeah. So I'm, I'm getting my collection back up. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Reliving me past, definitely. That's why I did me space yeah. once. Um, but then, there's there's times I look at other pieces of work just to yeah to pat myself on the back. The, the ego <laughs> side of things, you know. Because I mean, I I, I, I I'm really grateful. To, yeah, I'm I am always always really insecure about what it is I've done, and I suppose I still am. You know. There you go. I'm, I'm incredibly insecure about this guy at the moment. I can't even get. Yeah. Oh, that I I really like that. Yeah. I, I was, I've been having a look on because uh, you posted it on Facebook, haven't you? Yeah, um, yeah. He's not he's not finished yet. There's still a couple more bits to do. But yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pinch your uh, icicle idea as well. <laughs> Mate, do it. I mean, it's, it's really inspired by David Soper. You yeah. know, because he, he does water that way. Because, you know, he, he asked um, Byron and David allowed me to go on the course that he ran up in Manchester not so long ago. And, you mm. know, if those guys are going to invite you to that and not ask for anything in return, then you have to say yeah, don't you? Yeah. And it was it was so nice. Again, it, it took me back to that chat when we were at Salute. So nice again to hear somebody talking my language. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he uses clear plastic as a foundation for, say, waves or, yeah. or um, like splashes of water. Yeah. Or, and I just thought, well, just turn it upside down. You've got an icicle really there, haven't you? You know, so <laughs> simple as that. So I can only thank that guy. Because uh, normally I'd just get a bit of clear sprue and just tease it out. it out yeah, yeah and I, I do it over the over the cooker which some people think is crazy but there you go <laughs> um so yeah yeah use it oh here's a tip for you mm. um this is a hindsight tip so if i do the icicles again this is how i do it so right. what i did was I, I cut a flat spike 
what I'd do this time is I'd shave the top, I'd taper it off, you know, so instead of it going like that, just as a cut off, I'd, so it tapers mm. off. So when you stick it to right. something, it, that join remains invisible. Okay, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. What... Your profile view, so that join remains invisible. Then the next thing I'd do is I wouldn't do the, the first cut as wide as I'd want the icicle. I'd use it just as a core. So actually what I'd start to do is I'd round the sides down. Mm -hmm. So then when you build it up with gloss varnish, you get less of this this, this oval profile. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Start, sides, start to round those sides and, 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 and do it thinner than you, you would originally want it and then build up to there. And then you can get mm -hmm. more natural shape to it. Um, another thing is the... Those icicles, I've, I've I've bent them to fit underneath. You know the um, the platform he stood on is it irregular shaped, so the icicles mm -hmm. have had to do that map, and I, I cut them in one piece like yeah. that. But where I bent it, obviously the plastic whites out a little bit. Yeah. So it won't be clear there. So if you know you've mm -hmm. got to do that, so either find a way to bend it so it won't white out the plastic, or snip it at each of those points and then put the curve in with layers of gloss varnish or water effect or whatever it is. So, yeah. So cool. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're, they're Top tips. Ways I'll, uh... Yeah. <laughs> so the last things I've got to do on this is, um, I've got this guy. I added him last night and he's, he's holding a stick, which really I think is someone's guts. He's, he's like, oh, yeah, on. he's uh, tugging on someone. Nestings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's, part, he's supposed to be part of one of the uh, plague bearers, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so, he's pulling um, out his. Damien yeah. Pedley, if you know Damien Pedley, he, he gave me these guys. Years ago, there was a, a, um, a greater demon in Nurgle. In 2015, it was, and some, he, he'd modelled hairs in the back of it. This was years ago. He's a gold demon winner from a while back. Yeah, but he doesn't like being too. Public. I have to check. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, oh, mate, it was the grossest, the grossest painted model I've ever seen. Literally, it was um, it was the Forge World Greater Demon of Nurgle, and he mm -hmm. individually taken. They must have been someone's eyelashes or pubes or something, but it was horrible. <laughs> it was really, honestly, and it, individual hairs, but hundreds of them all just coming out of this thing's back. It was. Ooh, I don't, you, you, know, you know the sort of thing you don't want to touch? You yeah, know it's, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> it could be anything crawling up it. You know, it was, a, yeah, it was an interesting experience to see that. What, you know, like when you see, you know, the people that have that, what, what's that phobia called? Tryptophobia. You know, and they got holes in your hand. Oh, oh yeah, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Like oh, so, yeah, you horrible. <laughs> Yeah, so that that one a golden demon that year it was really good. Huh. So, well, I'll, I'll go and check that out then. Actually, I probably have seen it, but you know, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. I, I can't remember how many demons he's won actually, but he did a giant, like a Nurgle giant, like I had a big on a single eye. But, that sounds yeah. very familiar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you'd know his work. I, 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 I'm no, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll, rec I'm, I'll Google it and I'm sure I'll recognise all these. <laughs> you know what? Google his blog, Mr. D's Painting Paint-Filled Hellhole. That's, that's his blog, <laughs> Mr. D's Paint-Filled Hellhole. Um, and it, he's, he's a wonderful guy, but he likes, he likes to keep a low, low profile, but even his army standard painting is boggles my mind. Yeah, it's really good. Really, really, really good. Are you writing it down? <laughs> no, no, I was just having a quick look at what, what people have been saying. Do you know what? I, yeah, actually, yeah, I forgot. I'll, I'll join you. If you. Mate, if you want to reply to anyone, you go for it. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you, uh, Raw Airsoft. That's really nice. Wow, I've missed loads of comments here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, see, L's about. 
<laughs> L, yeah. L, you're a wonderful man, by the way. Do you know what's you know what's strange? The, the image on my screen is your face, and as I scroll up, it's like I'm stroking your face, and it's really weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm stroking your cheek, Rich, as I scroll up the words. Wow, <laughs> loads. Oh, um, this, uh, Craig O'Reilly art isn't happy at me being snobby at them taking away the mini demons. It's not about snobbery. Um, it's about uh, making the the trophies uh, count for the same thing. So you've got like the classic golden demon where the competition is um, much harder. And then the mini demons. And well, the standard is still good at the mini demons. There's just not enough entries in these competitions to um, it's like, so the winner or the top three, they, they might be really, really good, but there might only be 10 entries in that category or, or even fewer. Some of them have had uh, so few entries that there's only enough uh, for trophies for those for the people entering, and it's just not. You know, you're not winning anything. <laughs> that that echoes some of my feelings on um, some of the entries in Salute last year. Yeah, which I, yeah. I mentioned in a video. Yeah, there was. Like in, in a couple of the categories, the people that won bronze, personally, I don't think would have got bronze if there'd have been more better painters there. They're only there yeah. because there wasn't enough of a variety. Exactly. And, yeah. and it's, it's not a knock on the people entering. Um, no, not it's at all. Pe Yeah, it, it's people not entering that's the problem. Um, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like I said earlier, earlier on, you know, <laughs> and we we all should be entering painting competitions. You know, I, I know I mm. don't because my heart isn't in it. But really, you, we should be entering because we support them. And like you said, with uh, Golden Demon going down to one event, and that's going to ram the level right up. Well, that can only yeah. promote the hobby. It can only promote it for, for us all. It can only make more of us better. It can only in yeah. inspire more of us. It can only create more of us teaching more. It can, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it can only just be a good thing, you know? Yeah. I so think, I'm, I mean, I'm up for it. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, from my perspective, I just want to see amazingly painted models. That, you know, that's why I go to the Golden Demon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or I mean, any competition, really. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to, um, who the fuck was I talking to yesterday? Um, yeah, somebody's saying that they're not good enough or they, they don't like painting or their paint jobs are no good. And I literally, I literally, and it, it sounds like a feel good meme because I'm full of that sort of stuff. But it, it's not, it's genuinely how I feel about it. The best painters are the ones that are painting. And that's the end of it. There's no more, there's no more discussion about detail in the middle. You know, about standard, about army standard, tabletop standard, or golden demons. Now, the best painters are the ones that are picking up a brush and doing it. Because with every stroke, they're stepping towards their goal. Yeah. And that that's just that, you know. And you can see passion without technical ability. But you can also see technical ability without passion. So... Mm -hmm. People are judging their 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 skills or their results, and they can't see their own passion showing through. Then they're missing out on something, you know. And it's, it's some of these people they could be putting down the brush, thinking they're not good enough. And you really are. Everyone already, yeah. Everyone already is, you know. And then you you, you get some technically brilliant painters that actually there's there's no. That's excitement amazing. there yeah it's just yeah, you know no and well done you blends are flawless well, well mm. all awesome you know but but so what you know you could do that with an airbrush in seconds you know not that yeah. i'm saying all, all painters that do that do because they not all do yeah. but yeah it is it is clinical it's soulless it, it it you know it doesn't excite you know so at both ends yeah. of the scale well What's missing or what's the common ground? Well, the common ground is both sets of people are painting. And the people who will do no paint jobs are the people who will get nowhere, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, it's true, if you don't paint, you can't win. <laughs> yeah. If you don't paint, you can't get better. 
or you can't have a painted army or you can't join in certain tournaments or you exclude yourself yeah. by not painting, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, best painters are the ones that are painting, no matter how good yeah. they think they are or how good anyone thinks they are, you know. So that's, that's where I am with that. I'll tell you what, mate, these comments are flying in everywhere. I, I almost don't know where... Did, where to start, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where to start. Wow, I can't believe it. I'm having you on more often. <laughs> <laughs> I send you my bill. <laughs> oh, go for it. Well, I'll get a Patreon going. And we'll get everyone else to pay for it. No, I'm not like that. I do have a Patreon. I've just not shared it with anyone. In no, I've, I've, I've got to update mine. I've, well, because I'm getting married in two weeks and then I'm going on honeymoon. So I've, I've got to get a load of videos done for when I'm away so that people are like, where's all our videos? <laughs> really? Wow. Mm. I, um, do you know what? I'm happy at the moment just doing videos on, on a whim and mm. as, as and when people need them, you know. And as much as the money would be nice, if that essential, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just can't. I just can't bring myself to to do it. And I'm having this little debate with myself, and we're going: Is it laziness, or is it some kind of fear? And I, I don't. I haven't quite figured out whether I, I don't. There's because there's times I think I'm not. I'm not good enough, or not worthy enough, maybe. You know. Mm. Um, but then at the same time, I know how good I am, and I know how well I do what I do, whether it be. Yeah. It well, be there's, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's two sides to the how good I am. You can look at your work dispassionately, and then, but then you have your emotional side as well. So you're like, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes you just got to don't think about uh, is it, you know, excited or like how bad do I think it is? It just Imagine that you didn't paint it, that someone else painted it, look at it, and you're like, you know, you can see it's good. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. But I think uh, what it is, is it, it's, it's about the money side of things. It's about, you know, the, the hobby for me at the moment, it's a very organic experience. If, if I'm filled with passion for it, I'll do it. If I want to play guitar instead, then that's what I'll do. You know, when you start mm -hmm. involving money, in it, it does become an obligation. Uh, yeah. Unless you make it clear to any of your patrons that, look, this is how I work. If you want to support the way I work, then blah, blah, blah. Mm. You know? But, yeah, you're right. It does. You do have to prepare. If you're going to make a promise that you're doing weekly videos or whatever it is you yeah. do, then, yeah, you have, to, you have to live up to that, you know? Mm. Um, I mean, it can be still, tricky. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Um, yeah. Especially yeah, because, if, let's say, so, you've got... Cool. Oh, I, I was going to say, so, because, so you have to record everything, but I don't um, speak while I'm painting because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. I don't want to try explaining what I'm doing or anything, so I just say something stupid. So I do the, the voice work afterwards so I can say exactly what I'm doing. Um, but I always, I'm always aware there's a camera on me while I'm painting. Um, yeah. Uh, and sometimes I'm like, well, I'm going, you know how like, people always want steps to paint something. They're like, oh, yeah. you go bang, bang, bang. That's how you do it. And I'm like, I don't paint like that, though. Sometimes I'll try something or oh, I don't think anyone do, does. And then people are going to be seeing me paint all this stuff. And then, then I just then I, I might wipe it out and <laughs> do it. I was like, well, you know, it's yeah. it's not good for, you know, doing tutorials on how to do something. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it I, makes it a lot what, of work. Yeah. One of the things I actually have always wanted to do, and it, it relates to what you've just said, is how to follow painting guides. I'd like to do a guide on how to follow a painting guide because to me, painting guides are for people that can already do it. Yeah. Because there's things missing in stages. And like, for example, I hope no one steals this idea, but I'm putting it out there. <laughs> there you go. What, what, what's rarely mentioned is application stages. So that you might be given a color stage, or this is the stage for scarsnit green, for example. You know, but they don't say that actually this scarsnit green is, is applied in 
like five color stages over four yeah. different consistencies with maybe two or three different types of brush stroke, you know, and yeah. when you yeah. take that into consideration, uh, I, I think I've got a trained enough eye to see how yeah. the process, you know, I can deconstruct because that's how I taught myself to paint. I can deconstruct and then I can reconstruct. Now, whether I'm right or not is irrelevant to a degree because if I can get the same result, then I'm right. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you, you, people, the people out there, if they're struggling with, with, with um, guides, is because guides are quite, I think, blindly, I don't think it's obviously intentional, guides are generally meant to help people. But unfortunately... They only help the people that could already do it, and it's almost an irony, isn't it? You know, because the people that can already do it, they don't necessarily need the help. You don't, you know? don't need, the, need the help, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, it, it can get difficult. The number of times that people have asked me what paints I've used for painting that black space marine. Yeah, it's I'm like, I, So I've just, like, I, I start copy-pasting because, <laughs> you know, you just have to type it out so many times. And uh, I've been, like, I've been there. you're not going to get that met. result. Yeah, you're not going to get that result by just using the paints. <laughs> you, you've really got to see how I apply it because it's, it's so many different, you know, and I go backwards and forwards and sometimes I'll paint like a bit of wet blending or whatever. Then I might put a glaze over it. Then I put some damage down, then another glaze over it. And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it won't to write that same. out. Again, it? Yeah. 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 I, and just to write all these things that would just take, it takes so long. And people are always like, Oh, can you do it in PDF? Can you do it in PDF. And I, you know, I try to do the PDFs, but I'm like, Oh God, I can't put every single thing down that I'm doing. So. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> well, see, you know where I did the, um, conquest magazine, the plague Marine and the ultramarine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the reason I did that is to highlight to people, highlight, it's like a pun, right? To highlight <laughs> to people that, um, the, 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 the paints you're asking for, the recipes, they, they are irrelevant. You need the method, but in mm -hmm. order to understand the method, you do need a certain amount of knowledge, which is why I do them fundamentals courses. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've got, I've got these three colors, not these three, but I'm just going to hold three up for what, you know, the yeah. amount of different things I could do with just three colors is mind boggling. Yeah. You know, so if, if, if the amount of things I can do is infinite and somebody asks me for me non-met recipe, well, you know, they're, they're just asking for three things and they'll, they, they go off then and flail in this infinite. And if you don't know where, your thing is your target, your aspiration it, within that infinite variety of colors, then you are you're gonna get lost in it, and that's why, yeah, you know, that's why I, when I teach, one of the things I teach is I don't teach people how to paint necessarily, I teach them how, how to be aware of what choices they have to make or what choices yeah. they need to avoid, you know, and mm -hmm. I teach them how to look at painting. Um, and that's the bit that's missing, you know. And we never taught that from the beginning. We're not taught it in White Dwarf or in other videos. You know, when you, I watch, no. say, uh, who's the, is it Planet Figure? There's some videos on YouTube. But, but when I watch them, you just, you see a painter work, don't you? But you don't see why he works. When you, yeah. you know, that's why I get a kick out of teaching the fundamentals courses. Yeah. You know, that's why I never it, taught it at the beginning course either. Hmm. It's, it's complicated because um so you can teach you can give people all the skills but you can't teach them to be creative that's you know they have to express themselves and uh, you know because everyone has their preferences and you know, their likes and dislikes and things and um and they have to take all that and use that to paint a model uh so if they just haven't got that you can spend forever teaching them how to do something and they just yeah well, I've got some tips for those that, that might need that, by the way. But carry yeah. on, sorry. No, 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 that's it, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, for teaching people to be creative, because for a long time I never saw myself as being creative. And what I realised was is that as creative as we think we are, we are all standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm. Yeah, know. everything. Well, it's, that's that's humanity, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. You, you know. Exactly. That's, that's an empowering thought. 
Because mm. what that means is, that means it's okay to copy. Yeah, copy, copy, everything copy, is copied. Copy, copy. Everything yeah, exactly. is copied. That, that's what I do. That I mean, I'm not saying I, I just copy anything, but what I do is like, so I go through loads of artwork. I don't just mean models. I mean everything. Like uh, yeah, I yeah. love science fiction artwork and things, and I just I, I save loads of images on my PC, and um, yeah. I, I, sometimes I see a color scheme I like, or just the way the light hits yeah. something, or anything like that, and I'm like, oh, I'll pinch yeah. that and you know incorporate that into some work. Um, I'm the same. Man. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, well, that's that, what everyone has done, even if they don't know it. <laughs> yeah, correct. But when, once you realise that that's what everyone is doing and everyone has done, whether they know it or not, that becomes very empowering because let's say you, you copy 100 Ultramarines, you're then proficient at 100 Ultramarines. All right, let's copy 100 Arcs, you're then proficient at 100 Arcs. And then somebody goes, oh, I want you to paint this chaos thing. Will you paint it green and blue for me? Already, you now know how to paint green and blue really well. You know yeah. what I mean? And you can then patchwork those skills together however you want, and they become yeah. words in your vocabulary. And then, well, then, how do you want to stick them together? You know, oh, shit, it's got some red on it. Right, let's paint 100 red marines. You know, <laughs> whatever red marine you <laughs> no, want. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of red, isn't it? You yeah. Know? And then... Um, uh, it's. Ultramarines, for example, I really taught myself freehand on an Ultramarine army. I, I literally, for Games Workshop Manchester, it's like a two and a half thousand point Ultramarine army from 2001, 2002. And I hand painted every single Ultramarine symbol, tactical squad symbol. <laughs> uh, 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 sorry, any every squad marking, every yeah. chapter marking. Freehanded them all um, from, from the word go. And by the end of it, you know, I was, I was, I was. I was pretty proficient at doing ultramarine symbols, <laughs> yeah. but but that 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 skill, it pays off. Then it, it or yeah. it's either subliminally moves through into the rest of my paint jobs, or if I need to deliberately draw on it, then I draw on it. You know, and that's just through mm. copying. You know, yeah, and that's that, well, that's, that's what crazy. that's what all the. All the great artists used to do that. Like they all had their schools, they, like the masters. They had their school. They, that's what they, they would copy the styles and everything, just to get those yeah, yeah. skills down. You get the skills, then you go yeah. and do your own thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I actually, I actually did something very similar to you with the shoulder pads. I had an imperial fist army. Uh, I, I painted every single <laughs> uh, fist on the, the shoulder pads. That was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I love to see pictures of that. How long ago was that? Oh, that was years and years ago now. Um, yeah, an Imperial probably, Fist symbol is a yeah. level up from an Ultramarine symbol, isn't it? Unless yeah, you think oh, it's, 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 it's like this. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's weird, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> like, if, the latest wise well, actually has a guide for Crimson Fists. It's oh, yeah, I saw that. Mm. So, yeah, for, for those that want to know how to do a fist symbol, it's in White's Wolf. Yeah, it's a good guide, that as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's like, quite yeah. a few steps that he's put in it. <laughs> yeah. But it is only colour steps. We need yeah, application yeah. stages. Mm. You know? Although, to be fair, for that uh, freehand that's in the White Dwarf, it's very um, uh, two-dimensional. It's very flat and uh, strong yeah, shape. Yeah. So the yeah. it's not quite as important for the, uh, yeah. the different brush yeah. marks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> seeing um every metal guides to that quality again is a real pleasure you know it's really nice yeah you know here's a question that popped into my head um a couple of minutes ago what colors do you hate painting the most because you, you squirmed at red when i said red marines um I say just hate. lots of them uh, no so <laughs> I, I i don't really mind um it it depends on the paint itself, I think, um, because uh, some paints are just harder to work with because of the consistency and like yeah. the transparency and things like that. Um, yeah. I don't have any particular color hate though. Uh, the thing with the, the red uh, space means was just painting a lot of them. Um, I'm not, I, I get bored of painting the same thing over and over. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's why if you give me one uh, Marine, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I remind myself 
to like two things when it comes to army painting. I remind myself one that a thought is just a thought, and it only becomes a feeling if I allow it to become more than a thought. So yeah, yeah. Then the moment I start, the moment I admit I'm being, but I'm getting bored, then I'll get more bored. Mm. So if I if I admit I'm bored, and then I go, well, that's just a thought in my head. Come on, let's go. I'll crack on with that then. It'll that that yeah. Uh, opposite will grow in me, and then the other one is. I I love this analogy because I find again it's just empowering. Like it doesn't matter what color I'm doing, I'm still doing this, mm. and I've never got bored of this. Yeah. Why should I get bored uh, of a color, or you know, or, or a space marine, or? And it's just each time, really, we try to perfect the way we use this, the way we use this, and the way we use that, aren't we? Yeah. Ultimately. You know. I think what it is is, um, so if I'm painting, say, a squad, um, once I've painted uh, one or two guys, that's it. You know, I'm, I'm, I've figured out how I'm doing it, and then it's just the same doing it, you know, replicating it, which is a skill in itself, keeping them consistent. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, the thing is, I, I always want to. I'm always wanting to improve, or you know, like I try a new texture, or um, just you know, try something new. That's the thing. I, I always want to just push yeah. a little bit further, and it's the army painting is not conducive to that. <laughs> um, oh, that's a choice, though, isn't it? That, yeah, that could yeah. be a choice. You know, uh, but I tell you, you mentioned yeah. texture, dude. I love your textures when you paint. You know the skulls and what have you. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, the dimensions you get in there just blow me away. You know, um, and when you uh, when you mentioned painting an entire night in freehand, for example, like didn't half get my mm. uh, another pony's coming out of here. Half get me cogs turning. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> um, I, I started looking. Um, deeper in art I do things like that um, so that's that's my current little thing is exploring um, your style a little bit um, in how to get them textures because I know you know I know I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at and um, you're right it is about exploration isn't it about growing yeah you know because I, yeah. I want it all that that Nurgle mm. guy is a, is a world apart from me sanguine regard, who's a world apart from mm. the um, the orc bust, you know. And I just, I just, I just want it all, you know. I don't like sitting back saying I am this kind of painter or I am that. Although yeah. I do have a, I have my default, and I really like my default style. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I want it all. Should I need to draw on it? You know. Well, exactly, all because as you you said earlier, like um, you've got. So you, you get those skills, but then you can bring them all into, uh, and they can be used on other things. Yeah. You know, so, you, I mean, painting that orc bust, you've, you've used all the, the different colours and things, and, okay, so it's a larger area, but then you can, like, transfer that down onto, a, say, a space marine, like, and you'll get something completely different that maybe no one else has painted. Yeah, yeah absolutely you will. And, again, and that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know what? Yeah, it is, especially when you realise <laughs> you've got something new. Again, like, yeah. with that... With the Conquest Marine, I didn't really know what that green was going to look like as a highlight for blue. I just knew the green was lighter. And yeah. that was exciting, looking at the results at the end, going, oh, yeah, brilliant. But, you know, because the, the blend on the shade for that Marine, given how quick I had to do it, the, the blend on that shade that I've got is really nice. And I was like, oh, do you know what? Yeah, it just reinforces, uh, it reinforces the idea that exploring these things not just are gonna make you create creatively better but also technically they'll make you better oh there's 10 seconds remaining yep. whoa the video's oh. about to end Richard, thank you it's it's gonna cut off any 